uh, the most gentlemanly person in the bill uh, in the business. He does not come to conventions. I think you have to put him in chains to, to come into uh, public events. And I don't think he enjoys being lauded. The rest of us do. They want to. We got people laughing at what we say and, and enjoying us as personalities. But Frank does not. Uh, Frank uh, is probably the wealthiest single individual in voiceover. Uh, um, Scooby Doo. Who's the the kid behind the the the, the, the white bread kid? Fred. 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 Uh, the character name. Fred. 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 All right. He still does that character. He also did the claw in uh, Inspector Gadget. You remember, he's down in there like that. And it used to amaze me that Frank had a range, infinite range, uh, vocally. Uh, sweet guy. One day in the studio, I came in getting ready for a session, and there was a riser, that is a step, where you step down from one place. And Frank was down there, and to, to be polite, he kind of got up so he'd be at the same level talking with me. So I decided it'd be kind of fun to sit down, and I, he'd, he'd have to sit down. And as soon as he sat down, I stood up. <laughs> <laughs> pretty soon he said, what are you doing with me? <laughs> You're playing with my head. Uh, yeah, Frank is an extremely talented person, and, and probably not as well known as a lot of other individuals, but probably is as well off as anybody who's ever faced a microphone. He, he uh, has a rule, he doesn't work Thursdays and Fridays, uh, or Saturdays and Sundays, so that he can fly his airplane around, and uh, just, just an extremely nice gentleman. He, he used to, he was stand-up, that was where he started the business, and uh, Mort Saul used him as the lead-in to, to get to warm up the audience. Uh, I don't know, how, how many know more who Mort Saul was? Yeah, about eight of you. <laughs> Excuse me, I'll try to, try to be more contemporary. <laughs> but that, that's Frank, uh, the most amazing guy in the voice business. I think as amazing, if you already knew the statistics, as Mel Blank. Oh, boy. One of the most amazing voice guys I got to work with was Don Messick who was the voice of Scooby-Doo. Frank Walker is now the voice of Scooby-Doo. Uh, uh, kind of a uh, same team. Dawes, uh, Butler, and Don Messick were almost always paired. Uh, they, they, they created Jellystone Park. Um, Joe got on me once, Mr. Barbera got on me once. He said, move Dawes along. He's slowing down a little bit. And uh, we had a thing called Laugh Olympics which was basically a race show. It was not race show, but a show about races. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> I started to, to do what Joe, Joe had said, move him along. And uh, I said to Dawes, uh, the, the point of this show is not so much your personality as it is a race. The score comes up, who's ahead, who's behind. So I, I want to move the tempo a little bit. And he kind of, I could see he was kind of wrinkled by that. Monday morning, after my having chastised him about his tempo, I got a five-page letter handwritten from him how I was destroying the, the somewhat languid, laconic characters of Huck and Huckleberry, uh, Huck and jo uh, Huck and um, who was it? Yogi. Anyhow, I, I didn't know how to handle it. Then he went back and told Joe I was kicking his butt too much, <laughs> and he was not happy with my having pushed him on the tempo. But uh, there I was between him. Joe had said, push him. He comes back to Joe and says, hey, he's, he's leading on me. Uh, we repaired that little bit of disagreement. Uh, but I, I tried to convince Dawes that the, the show was more important than just his character. So there are a few characters there <laughs> I remember working with. Uh, uh, one other, and uh, <coughs> Hong Kong Fui. <laughs> Yeah. That was, uh, help me, Scatman Crothers. Um, he was in The Shining. Oh, yeah. And uh, as a live action actor. Anyway, he did Hong Kong Fui and later on Jazz, the character of Jazz in Transformers. And it, uh, he passed away in the middle of uh, doing the episodes of it. We had three more that he was written into, so I turned it. I started doing this character like that, and 
I kind of was a little afraid somebody might not like that thing, and I was imitating the black man. And uh, I did three episodes, and then kind of forgot about it, and nobody ever noticed it, so I was kind of pleased. Scatman was a, a lovely person to work with. Uh, kind of a fun thing about working with him on, on jokes. He, he had a, a great sense of comedy, but he didn't know the rhythm. All jokes have the rhythm, but he go ba da ba da ba da ba or ba 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 boom, whatever. <laughs> and and he'd say uh, the joke, and I'd say, Scat, can we talk about the rhythm? Oh, why do you want to know? I said, well, why don't we try this way? I'll go a rhythm thing, and I'll do that. But if we do ba da ba, and you'll say, oh, that's the rhythm of the joke. And I'd say, yeah, good. So I he, he'd read the joke, and I'd say, why don't we try it this way? Come with do ba. And he would say, yeah, that'll work, man. All right, let's do it. <laughs> so it was, it was delightful working with him. And then when he worked as, as Transformer character, it was an entirely different kind of character. But uh, it was, that's, 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 I think, what the greatest fun in the business is the collaboration, the other guys you work with, and how you are delighted by their personalities and their talents. And uh, we do that. We're amazed by each other all the time. It's a part of a great deal of the fun of I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Tony. Jerry, uh, we had a basketball team. Oh, yeah. Talk to the microphone. Talk to them, not to me. 